I recently reviewed the DryFix NT2 filament drive, which is a fantastic filament drive with some small shortcomings. If you want to check the video where I review that device, please look at the link in the description of this video and or check the other videos that I have in my channels where I review uh, 3D printer devices and filament dryers and other things in there. One of those short comments that I was talking about on the NT2 device was the fact that if you had a spool that was a little bit bigger than the regular size, you know, the one kilo, 750 grams spool size, or if you had one of these card box fil uh, filament spools together with the plastic that some people have to make it uh, roll a little bit better, then the NT2 didn't have enough space for that spool inside. Therefore, I went and I checked what other options uh, DryFix has to fit bigger filaments. And I found the double NT1, which is the device that I'm going to be reviewing in this video. The double NT1 is not a huge device, it's quite big, but it fits very well next to my Voron 2.4, for example. The design is pretty sleek and it has enough space, as I was saying, to have either two filaments spool of one kilo or one big filament spool of, I believe, three kilos is the, the size that fits in there pretty well. And one of the things that I've been liking quite a lot from this filament dryer is the exit points for the filament. If you look at the design of, of the double NT1, you're gonna see that it has many exit points. And why is this important? Well, the thing is that when you have a filament rolling inside of one of these devices and you wanna drag the filament into your printer, you want to have the less amount of friction for that filament to go out of the filament spooler and into your printer. When you have holes in, in different places where the filament can have some kind of angle, that angle is going to make the, the drag to be much higher. And in this device, you can see that you have holes on the top, you can see that you have holes on the front, and you can have holes or you have holes on the back, which makes it very flexible to use it on whatever direction you want, on whatever printer you want. This also brings another option, and it's the fact that you can have two different spools rolling at a different pace, and each one of them connected to a different uh, printer, which is pretty good because you, then you have just one unit, you, two rolls, two printers, and doing the job, right? Something that you have to think in this scenario, which is uh, maybe a downside of this uh, filament dryer, is the fact that the temperature inside that chamber is going to have to be the same for both kind of spools. This has the consequence that if, for example, you wanted to print in one printer, let's say uh, PA12, and in the other one you want to print PLA, the temperature in the chamber is going to have to be the one for PLA in this case, and it might not be enough for or to dry the PA12. So this is something to keep in mind when you're looking at this scenario where you're using two different spools at the same time. We can move to the UI of this dryer, which is dead simple. Like there is one button to turn on and off the device, one setting button and one plus and minus just to modify the values. If you click on the setting button, you can change either the temperature that you have on the chamber and if uh, if you click again on that button, you're going to be modifying the time that you're going to be drying or warming up that chamber. There is nothing else that you can choose around. And here is another, let's say, shortcoming or maybe characteristic of this filament dryer. If you're going to dry, for example, TPU, I know by heart that 55, 57 degrees is what you should have on the dryer. But if you ask me right now, what's the temperature that I should have for uh, ABS? I don't know from the top of my head. And there is nothing on this filament dryer that gives me an idea of what's the temperature that I should use for different kind of filament types. In the smaller version or the, 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 the little brother of the double NT1, 
you had on the screen or you had on the front panel of the dryer uh, the printed information of what was recommended for each kind of filament type. This is helpful because then you can modify the temperature there accordingly the, the plastic that you're going to be drying. Some other brands take the approach of having predefined uh, values and then you choose for example directly the name TPU and the system itself knows that it has to adapt to 55 degrees. That's very simple for most of users and the fixed dry approach, it's a bit more complicated because it, either you have to have the information somewhere visible or you have to remember by heart. In the case of the WNT1, this information exists on the manual. And let's be honest, how many of you read the manual? How many of you keep the manual, right? This means that, well, you might have to maybe write down the information and put it on a sticker and maybe put it on the plastic in front of the, the device. But it would have been very nice to have a solution similar to the NT2, right? That's just a suggestion on my side. Inside the filament dryer, you're gonna find four independent rods for your filaments to roll freely. These rods can also be used combined if you're using a, a bigger spool to help your filament to, draw, to, to roll. They look to be very good quality and I'm not, I don't have any doubt that they're gonna do a good job to just let you roll and feed your printer with the spool that you have selected. Of course, in this case, you have to think that you're gonna be rolling the spool on top of these rods which means that your spool itself physically has to be in good shape to roll correctly. I have some spools that have some dents here and there and they, they, don't, they don't rotate correctly or sometimes when they get to a place where you have this dent, they're gonna stop or they're going to add friction, which is not good. Some other brands are doing some kind of hybrids that you can use to um, hang the roller from a plastic part, or you can roll the, the spooler if you have, um, if you want to have this option. The fixed dry double NT1 doesn't have an option. It's always going to be rolling on top of this rod, which in general, for me, it's the best solution. It's the one that offers the best uh, flow, I would say, but just saying it, if you have one of these spools are a little bit broken, this dryer is not going to help you with that. Fixed dry is marketing this device as reaching 70 degrees which is going to allow you to dry a good amount of different kind of filaments. I tested it and I didn't see any problem reaching that temperature and drying filaments like my PA12. One thing that I did notice is that the only source of heat comes from the bottom. You have there a heating element plus a fan and a little hat doing that the heat is going to be dissipated a little bit on the bottom of the, the filament dry. Still, this means that the heat is just coming from one source and using the fan to try to warm up the whole chamber. This is going to make that there is a difference. It's gonna, there is always going to be a difference between the temperature that the roll, the filament roll is at the bottom, which is closer to the source of the heat and the top of the filament roll. Sometimes this is not going to be a big issue depending on the kind of filament that you're using, the kind of plastic that you're using. If, for example, you're doing PLA, which barely needs to be dry, you're not gonna have that much problem because most probably the whole chamber is gonna reach the right temperature and you're going to have a similar temperature at the top and at the bottom. But when you are warming up or drying some other, like nylon, for example, the heat at the bottom is going to be much higher than the one at the top. And the close the roll is to that source is going to make also that the temperature at the bottom is gonna be higher. This might not be a big issue, but it could create big issues, especially if the roll is not rotating and just staying there for a few hours in that position. That could make things um, different. Something that I like is the fact that this case has holes at the top, which is going to let the humidity just dissipate through there. 
this has been a design mistake in some other filament dryers that I have reviewed where there is no space for this humidity to flow away and it keeps it inside the, the device all the time. One thing that I noticed which I'm not loving from this dryer is the fact that once you close the lid to open it again it takes a lot of effort. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong but there is no there is no hook, there is no hole, there is no handle, there is nothing that helps me push this thing up and since it's all plastic you have to kind of push it inside to lift it and I'm afraid that I'm going to push too hard and break it. Um, I don't know if it's again only me that is having this problem or anyone else and I don't think it's a huge problem um, but it's still something to consider and keep in mind when you are looking at, at this device and the design that it has. As a summary, I would say, I believe that this device is doing a very good job at what it has to do, right? Which is dry the filament with the 70 degrees, give you a broad range of uh, plastic type that you can, uh, you can dry in here. And as a spool holder, it's also going to be very good. The strength of this filament dryer is the size. If you have spools of three kilos, or if you want to dry two spools at the same time because you have two printers, this is going to be an easy selection for you. When you compare it to some others that are very similar, again, you have the flexibility to do what you need to do. It does that main job very well. And even if I would say that, for example, the UI or the interface to control it is not the most wonderful one, it's still simple enough to understand it. And with some small tricks here and there, like having the filament temperature somewhere and like annotated so you understand what you're going to, to put, then everything is going to be good. Price is also quite good. If you think about it, this is a two spool filament dryer for $77.99 US dollar. That's almost $20 more expensive than the little brother, the NT2, which only has one spool space. Also, if you look at other filament dryers in the market more popular, like for example, the Sunlu S2, that one is this filament dryer is just $9, under $10 more expensive than the Sulu S2, which again fits only one spool. So if you think about it, this is doing the, the, a good job. It's reaching 70 degrees, which for example, the Sulu doesn't really do, or maybe it does, I don't remember. But it's, it's drying better than the Sulu for just closer to $10 more and you get two spools inside. For me, that's a good deal. If you found this review useful, please remember to like and comment and subscribe to our channel. That's the way that you can help us do more content like this one. And I would like to say thank you for watching and see you soon.